What is your least favourite track in sim racing? Maybe it's Hungaroring, Barcelona or even Monza? Well, if you said Paul Ricard, you would actually be in the majority, so why is it the most hated circuit in sim racing? Maybe it's just the obnoxious lines that surround the track, the terrible pit entry and exits, or maybe it's just because it was built by the French. Just kidding. In this video, I'll be covering everything that makes Paul Ricard a terrible circuit. Then I'll do a corner by corner analysis just to hammer home how terrible this track is. And at the end of the video, I'll be giving the track a redesign to make it somewhat fun to drive. So without further ado, let's get into it. Paul Ricard was originally designed to be the best test circuit in the world, meaning it's a very watered down track with very little personality. Is very flat and honestly dull to drive with very little thought put into its design for actual racing. There are a lot of layouts on this track and anyone that has driven it or even just watched it on TV know that the layout of the track can be downright confusing. On every single part of the circuit there are pieces of track spurring off to make different layouts without much telling you that that isn't part of the layout you're racing. If you combine this with the flatness of the track, it can honestly become a headache to race on. And that leads me into my next point, the track and corners itself. Like I said, Paul Ricard is incredibly flat. If you think of the best racetracks in the world, they have a moderate to severe elevation change, which adds to the fun, just like a roller coaster. The Nordschleife, Spa, Brands Hatch, Suzuka, Red Bull Ring, Monaco, just to name a few. Of course, there are a few exceptions such as Silverstone or Monza, but for the most part, elevation makes the track fun, and Paul Ricard isn't included in this exception. It has an elevation change of just 30 meters. In my opinion, turn one disrupts the flow of the track from the get-go. You come hurtling down the straight, and you're straight into a corner, which you have to slow down for considerably, which then leads into another curve. Additionally, the double curve really only allows you to take one line through this corner safely. Meaning, if you are side by side with another car on the straight, one of you would have to concede your position and not carry the battle into the first corner, which is just bad design for actual racing in my opinion. So after turn 1 is turn 2, which isn't really a turn at all, just a slightly bent straight. Not much to say here, it's just outright boring. You approach turn 3, a semi-sharp right-hander, which again only has one possible line. Maybe this would be a decent corner, but no, straight onto turn 4, which you have to slow down for considerably, totally ruining the flow. But wait, there's more. Turn 4 only has one line to drive again, going into turn 5. Turn 5 is an almost hairpin like corner, which again, just decimates the flow from the previous corner, as you have to slow down again. Now there is a 70 metre straight here, which could actually lead to some good overtakes, going into turn 6. Turn 6 is quite a good corner admittedly. It reminds me of the Parabolica where you start off pretty shallow and can take it wide off the track limits. However, the one good corner is spoiled by turn 7, which is a small kink leading onto the straight. That ruins any chance of being side by side while you're moving onto the straight. As you can see, there isn't much room for battling or overtaking in this first complex. Not only is there only one line through this entire section, but the flow is also shocking. But don't click off yet, it gets even better. This terrible corner complex leads onto one of the most boring parts of the track, the Mistral Straight. The Mistral is renowned for being the most pointless thing in racing. This straight, that isn't even the home straight, clocks in at over 1.8 kilometers. To put this into perspective, the Nordschleife Straight is just 2 kilometers. That is insane. The Mistral Straight makes up over 30% of Paul Ricard, whereas the Nordschleife Straight makes up under 10% of Nordschleife. So the Mistral leads us into turn 10. Admittedly, an okay corner. Not much to say about this one either, a fast sweeping corner off a long straight. Turn 1 and turn 2 should take notes. But that is where the good part ends. Turns 11 through 15 are arguably even worse than the first complex we mentioned earlier. Turn 11 is a nasty change in radius double apex that raises your hopes and dreams and then crushes them in an instant. You come out of the first curve at pretty high speed. Then you have to slow down again for a sharper turn that just doesn't feel natural at all. I think that is a common theme throughout Paul Ricard, it just doesn't feel natural. So you come out of the disgusting turn 11, shaken but not stirred. Which brings us on to turn 12, another change in radius corner. Were these Frenchmen drunk while designing this track and capable of drawing a perfectly good semicircle? Seems so. The flow is completely off with this one 
and again it would be a good corner but the little kink in the last 25% ruins the flow. Turns 13 and 14, things are actually looking promising here, a nice right handed curve into a lovely flowing left hander, this part actually looks decent. No, just kidding, turns 13 and 14 lead into turn 15, which is a slow hairpin just before the straight, flow ruined. If you're still watching after that very negative track review, hopefully you can see why Paul Ricard is a terrible track now. Other than the flow and the corners, I still have more gripes with this track, which I will quickly cover for the sake of time. The entire track is just runoff, no punishment for going wide. The pit entry is terrible, a sharp turn on the straight, and the exit is even worse, ejecting you onto the racing line just before T1. The track is way too flat, making it hard to see all the terrible corners that I've mentioned. The blue, white and red stripes are terrible to look at. It was built to be a test track and feels way too artificial. So with that out of the way, let's get on to the track redesign. To start off with the redesign, I wanted to remove turn one. So I just paved over those areas and it's already an improvement in my opinion. So moving up to the first complex, I took inspiration from Watkins Glen here. There's the bus stop and the long sweeping corner that follows it. The red lines are the curb stones. Just a brilliant few corners, you don't really need to slow down for any of them, you just hold the car on the limit, which is exactly what this track needs in my opinion. You can see the driving line there in green, and the dark green and the yellow are gravel and grass. So moving down the straight, I wanted to add a nice fast corner here, so I chose Maggots and Beckets from Silverstone. Again it's just a brilliantly flowing track and it doesn't slow you down too much. So, in my opinion, it's a very good addition to the straight to make it less boring, let's just say that. Again, adding more gravel and grass because this track really needs it. So here I added the Parabolica from Monza. I think it's perfect for the end of the long straight coming straight out of uh, Maggots and Beckets. Again, and the Parabolica goes down a nice short straight into the chicane at Monza, which makes for some nice battles admittedly. Again, added more gravel and grass. And finally, we add the S's from Suzuka. Now, these don't look like the S's at all, but that's what I tried to draw. And as you can see here, it's just a really nice flying track. I would actually drive this in a Soto Corsa. If someone wants to make this into a mod, I'll be overjoyed to drive it. So make sure you click the like button if you enjoyed the video. Don't forget to share this video with your Paul Ricard hating friends. And if you're new around here, hit that subscribe button. Thank you for watching and I'll see you in the next one.